Yo, what is up, y'all? My name is Devin. Before I get into this, I want to preface this whole video by saying I personally and a lot of people that I know did not have to stop testosterone before top surgery. Reason being is because my doctor was so close, he's about a 20 minute drive to the point where he felt confident that if an emergency did arise, he would be able to see me soon enough and intervene with any emergencies, right? So that's just a quick disclaimer. If you're super, super close to your doctor, they may feel more comfortable in not having you stop testosterone, okay? But there are a multitude of reasons why your doctor may be asking you to stop testosterone, and I'm going to be getting into why you should listen to them, okay? But before I get into that, if you are interested in working with me on the one-on-one -on -one coaching level or on a custom meal and training plan, you can definitely email me. It's going to pop up over here, or you can check out my website link down below. On my website, you can also find my training plan, Mask Made Simple, which is great if you're preparing for top surgery, as well as my high-protein cookbook, Healthy Doesn't Suck. Lastly, if you do want to try out some amazing protein, some amazing pre-workout, you can definitely check out my sponsor, Legion. They're going to be linked down below, and make sure you use code Devin for 20% off your first order, okay? Let's go ahead and get into the video. There's several reasons why your doctor is actually stopped testosterone before top surgery is all about blood, baby. It's all about blood, okay? If you start testosterone, you know that you have to get your labs done every three months for the first year, every six months for the second year, once a year after that, right? So the reason why every single doctor is so meticulous about checking your blood is because testosterone thickens your blood and it impacts your cardiovascular health. Not to some crazy degree that you should be afraid to start it, unless you do have some history of cardiovascular health, which your doctor will discuss with you. But there's a couple of markers that your doctor is going to be looking for, okay? That's going to be your red blood cell count, your hematocrine hemoglobin, and and your platelet level. So if any of these markers are elevated, which you'll see when you get your pre-op lab work done, you will be told, hey, we need to get these down. We need to get everything on track before you can get top surgery, okay? And honestly, a lot of these blood thickening aspects of testosterone can be mitigated by A, donating blood, B, reducing your dosage, or C, taking a look at your food intake. How does this relate to top surgery, Devin? I'm tired of hearing you talk about blood. What does it have to do with me having to stop my freaking medicine for two weeks, bro? If you do have a blood thickening agent inside of your system when you're undergoing surgery, the biggest risk that can happen is blood clotting, right? So if you get a blood clot in a major artery, that's literally a stroke and that can literally kill you. It can cause excess bleeding. It can cause hematomas, anything like that. So the next aspect of this that I really want y'all to keep in mind, testosterone can also cause swelling and inflammation just because your blood is so thick. And lastly, because testosterone can sometimes raise your estrogen levels, it can also cause edema. Listen to your doctor. I know that dysphoria sucks. I know it feels like the world might and your transition might come to a screeching halt if you stop testosterone for those two weeks, but it will not. Some things that I want you to keep in mind, okay? Your brain is gonna play tricks with you. It's gonna make you feel like you're detransitioning. It's gonna make you feel like shit. So there's a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind. Key points, testosterone levels do not just crash. So if I inject on Monday and I do blood work on the next Monday, I might have 300, 200 nanograms per deciliter. The average female does not have that much testosterone in their system. The important thing to keep in mind is you're not gonna have any major effects from that. You're not gonna lose muscle mass, your voice is not going to go back, you're not going to lose your facial hair or anything like that. Two weeks, which is the average that doctors tell you to stay off of your testosterone, is simply not enough time for you to have any crazy negative impacts, okay? The biggest thing that may happen if you're not on top of it is your mental health can kind of go a little bit into the shitter. No one loves me. My phone bill isn't paid. They canceled the grassy. But there are ways to mitigate this, okay? So the first thing, as woo-woo as this may sound, is to fucking control your brain, okay? I've had to go off testosterone for a little bit, thanks to Santis, and I have homies that have had to go off testosterone for a very long time due to various insurance situations. And the number one thing that happened is they had less energy, but things that did not happen. They did not lose all of their muscle mass. They did not get their cycles back unless they were off for a very long time. I'm talking months. There are ways that you can counteract the negative side effects. You might automatically start to feel lower energy. Energy. The biggest thing that's going to help you when you feel like you have low energy is mainly going to be food. Make sure that when you're in recovery, you're biasing your food intake towards micronutrient rich foods. We're not looking for junk food. We're not looking for Jimmy John's. We're not looking for Panda Express. We're looking for food that is vitamin rich, okay? If you've never eaten healthy in your life, post-op is the perfect time to take that seriously because A, it's going to help with your recovery genuinely, and B, it's going to help you feel better in your brain. Aside from eating proper micronutrients, you're going to want to make sure that you maintain a proper sleep schedule. Unfortunately, I know way too many homies who didn't have too much going on for them after top surgery because you know you're resting you're not going to work you're not training because you're not able to so you just kind of get in the slump you're like fuck it bro i can't do anything i'm just gonna stay up until three o'clock in the morning i'm gonna go to bed whenever i feel like it because i have nothing to do that's not gonna be conducive to your healing and that's not gonna be conducive to your energy or your mental health make sure that you maintain a positive sleep schedule is it normal to kind of sleep a little bit longer wake up a little bit later take advantage of being off sure but should you be entirely flip-flopping your schedule and feeling like a total 
piece of crap. No, so maintain a proper sleep schedule. And the last thing, and you guys are gonna roll your eyes and I don't care, you can roll your eyes until they fall out of your head, okay? Make sure that you keep up with your water intake. I cannot explain how important it is to keep up with your water intake to make sure that you are passing fluids properly, to make sure that you are cleaning your system out, right? You don't wanna just be a vegetable on the couch doing nothing, drinking no water, eating no micronutrient rich foods. If you think this one thing is out of my control, right? I'm not able to keep taking testosterone and that's what makes me feel awesome every single day. There are all these other things that you do have in your control. So take it upon yourself to make sure that you're absolutely knocking all those other factors that I just mentioned out of the freaking park. If you had to stop testosterone before top surgery and you have any experiences about this, definitely drop that in the comment section below. If you are like me and you did not have to stop testosterone before top surgery, I'm curious on what the reasoning is that your doctor gave you. If it was any different than mine, definitely follow me on Instagram. It's at DVNSPRS, but that's also going to be linked down below. And like I always say, Devin loves you. Devin's a Dawn and Devin is out of here, boy. Ah.